keep praising this morning, church. All right, let's go. I want to see hands. I know you have more in you for your king this morning. Come on. Come on, you know this one. We're going to sing it out. Wanted to live. Wanted to this morning. Do you believe that praise breaks chains this morning right now? Are you excited to praise him this morning? Right now, why don't we shift up your praise right now? Lord God, we glorify you. Why don't you speak out this morning? Lord, we lift up your praise this morning. You are worthy of the praise, Lord. We know that we're praising chains are broken.
God that we get to sing to, that we get to declare that He is He is worthy of it all. He is so worthy. And, and Genesis 8, verse 20 to 21 says this. This is after Noah has finally got off the ark. It says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. See, Noah gets off the ark and he makes a sacrifice to the Lord and it's a pleasing aroma, a soothing aroma to the Lord. 
And that sacrifice that we can make today is our life. That we get to give a living sacrifice of our lives to God. And God is so pleased with that, with that sacrifice. It is an, an aroma to Him. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Let our life be an incense to you, Lord, that you are pleased with, God. God, we pray right now, Lord, over everyone in this building, God, that we would all live a life that is pleasing to you, that we would know that you are so worthy, God, that you have done so many amazing things, that every good and perfect gift is from you, God. And God, I just pray right now, Lord, that we would give you our life as a sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, that you are so pleased with us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Well, I have some prayer requests that I'm going to read through that I forgot. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Um, and God is good, amen. Amen. And he hears our prayer. He hears our prayers. And here we have a few prayer requests. And um, I love getting prayer requests because we're acknowledging the power of God. We're acknowledging his attentive ear, that he is listening, that every word we say is taken to the ear of God. How amazing is that? So we have Lorena has kidney cancer. And we're praying for complete healing. Complete healing. We've got Rini, who has done her back in. We're praying for healing and the pain to disappear. We have a new business starting up, and we're praying that God would bless it and use it for His glory. We have Gina praying for a new home for her family praying that God would open doors and supply their needs. We have Monica praying for Daryl, her partner, that will be going through cancer removal surgery on the 12th of August. It's a long procedure and he might be kept in ICU for three days. We're praying for a successful surgery and guidance to all those assessing Daryl and end after the surgery. Peace of mind and salvation for Daryl. We, the, we have all these amazing prayer requests. So why don't right now we just lift these to God. And if, and if you've got a prayer request that, that you want praying for, why don't you lift up your hand as well? And, and if you see somebody lifting up their hand, why don't you go pray for them? Put your hand on them because there is power in the laying of hands. So right now, Lord, we lift all these people up to you, God. God, we lift up Lorena, Lord. Lord, with kidney cancer, God. God, we're praying for complete healing, Lord. You are the God of all things. You have created all things. There is no power above you. There is no power even near you, God. But you have all power, Lord. Every cell, every living thing, everything obeys you, Jesus. Obeys you, God. Whatever you say, Lord, all things must do all things, but you have all power. So right now, I pray that these cancer cells, Lord, would just cease, Lord, that these cancer cells, Lord, would come to an end, God, that they would have no power at all over Lorena's body, Lord. But you, God, have all control, Lord. So we're praying for healing in the name of Jesus, God. God, we're praying for healing again in Rini, Lord, that her back, Lord, that all pain would be gone, God, that you would restore her back, Lord, to full functioning, Lord, to no pain, to no immobilization, Lord, but she would be able to walk and feel no pain, Lord. She would be fully restored in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name that heals, and the name that has done miracles before and does miracles today. God, we pray for healing, Jesus. Lord God, we pray, Lord, that this new business, God, that, that is starting up, Lord, would bless you, God. We pray, Lord, that it would bring a, a soothing aroma to you, God. That although it is a business that they're starting up, God, they would sacrifice it to you and submit it to you, knowing, Lord, that you have given them this opportunity. God, I just pray right now, Lord, that this business would glorify you, God. 
that this startup would go well, that it would go smoothly, Lord, and everything would go according to plan, Lord, according to your plan, God. I pray that we would just glorify you with everything we do, Lord, whether it's our daily life, whether it's work, whatever it is, God, that we would glorify you with it all, Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, for a new home right now for Gina, Lord, and her family. God, you are the God who provides and open doors. And we're praying, Lord, that you would open a door to a house, Lord, that you would open that front door, God, and it would not be a house, but it would be a home where your presence dwells, Lord. It would be a house, God, where you are, Lord, and the whole family can feel your presence wherever they are in that home, Lord. Praying right now, God, that you would provide, Lord. You were the God who provides, the God who never turns his face from us, God, and you will do what only you can do. Lord, we're also praying for Daryl, God, right now, Lord, as he has a cancer removal surgery on the 12th of August, God. We're praying right now for delivery. We're praying right now for healing, God. So much healing, Lord, but we, we trust in you, God. We know that you can do all these things, that these aren't impossible, God, but these the things that you can have and will do, God. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would have your hand over every situation, Lord, that Daryl would go into the surgery and be completely fine and everything would turn out 100% as it is meant to go, Lord. For you are a God who guides. You are a God who is here, Lord, and you will never let us go. We're praying for salvation, Lord. We're praying, Jesus, that you would come into the hearts of all, Lord, and the healing of the heart would be restored, God. We pray, Lord, that our hearts that are hardened, hardened our hearts that, that aren't towards you, God, right now we pray for healing over those hearts, Lord, that there would be a salvation, Lord, that we would all know you, Jesus, and our heart would be taken, the heart of stone would be taken, and a heart of flesh will be given to us, God. We pray, Lord, that you would do only what you can do, which is amazing. We thank you, God, and we give you all glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray these wonderful things. Amen. Amen. How good, church. Amen. Well, why don't you guys turn to the person next to you, say hi, give him a nice greeting, ask him how you're doing. How good is that? How good is community? How good is community? Yeah, so good. Getting to talk to everyone and, and socialize, say hi, how you going? Wow. How good is it that God has given us community? That he has given us these people, Lord, you know, um, that, that, that we, you know, iron sharpens iron, God. And, and it, we are so thankful that you have given us that, Lord. Wow. Wow, iron sharpens iron. So good to see all your faces here today. Love every single one of you guys. Honestly, I love I love this home. Like like uh, this is a home, you know. Like like I come here and I'm like, eh, this isn't a building. This is a home. We have a family. Like I literally, um, a couple of weeks back when when I was preaching, I had a friend come here. 
um, her name was Maddie, and she was sitting at the back. And, and I remember the day after she was saying to me, she was like, I really love how homey your church is. And I was like, oh, like, well, what do you mean? She was like, like and it's, it's like a family is there. Like, there's all ages. Like, like everyone, like, she goes to a, um, like, a 6 p.m. service at her church, and she says it's all young adults. And she loves that. She's like, that's amazing. But sometimes she misses having a family. She misses having elders. She misses having, having people younger to speak with, to get their view, right? And I'm so thankful and grateful that I get to be in a church that has a family. It is so awesome. It is so good. Amen. Now, we spoke about a sacrifice of our living, of a living sacrifice of our life. Now I'm going to talk about another little sacrifice called tithing. Tithing. How good is it that we get to give in a physical way? Drop that. It's amazing, isn't it? Well, I have this little little message that I want to share on tithing and and it's giving is a sacrifice, right? A sacrifice that does not have a guaranteed outcome, but only honoring God. Right? 2 Samuel 24 verse 24 says this. This is David and he's saying, But the king replied to Aru, Arunua, No, I insist on paying for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. So what's going on here, right, is, is David wants to make this sacrifice, right, to God. He wants to make this, this offering to God and, and he goes to buy these oxen, right? And, and the guy selling them is like, no, 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 you're, like, you're David. I, I'm going to give them to you for free. Like, you can have them, right? And David goes, no, I'm going to buy them because I will not sacrifice to the Lord that which cost me nothing. Because David understood that sacrifice cost, right? So David buys them and makes a sacrifice and God is pleased with it. And an example of what can happen with these sacrifices are seen throughout the Bible. We have so many examples of making sacrifices to God and what God can do with them, right? Of giving it to God and watching what God does with it. And I want to share two examples. One is the five loaves and two fish. The sacrifice where all that, all that they had was five loaves and two fish, but he sacrificed it knowing that God could do something with it. And what, what does God do? He feeds more than 5,000. 5,000 men plus women plus children feeds all of them with five loaves and two fish. So God takes his sacrifice and multiplies it right? But we see another sacrifice, a breaking of expensive perfume on Jesus' feet, right? See, what happens in this story, right, is, is there's this expensive fragrance that is taken to the feet of Jesus, broken on Jesus' feet, poured out on Jesus' feet. Jesus doesn't pay her back the amount that the fragrance cost. Jesus doesn't give her more money than what the fragrance cost. But he was pleased with the sacrifice because it honored him. See, we have two sacrifices here. One that, that Jesus multiplied and fed thousands with. Another one where Jesus didn't multiply, but he was so pleased with. See, when we give we give willingly. When we give, we give from our heart. God loves a cheerful giver, amen? Right? So when we give, we don't expect. We don't expect to be paid more. We don't expect to, to we're not like, oh God, I'm giving you this so that you can give me this. God, I'm giving you, you know, $5 so you can give me 10 You know, that's not our heart. Our heart is, God, I'm giving you this because you are my God. And you are worthy of it. Worthy of every cent. So with tithing, I encourage you guys to tithe. We have multiple ways to tithe. We have, 
um, online at Bay City Church. We have cash or card after the service, uh, direct deposit to the BSB account number, and you can text that number. That's pretty cool. Um, but so there's so many ways you can give, and I encourage you guys to give in. Can I pray for our giving? Yes, thank you. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us enough to bless. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is worthy of it all. I pray right now for every giver in this house, Lord, that, God, they would give with a willing and cheerful heart, knowing, Lord, that it is honoring you, God, that the one guarantee we have is that we can honor you. God, I pray, Lord, that we would give willingly, cheerfully, and give to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How good, how good. Oh, it's really hard to pick up paper. Um, anyway, um, I'm just going to, like, throw that down there. Um, <laughs> yikes. Um, anyway, can everybody say announcements? Announcements. Oh, I've dropped another thing. This is just not going well. All right. Okay. I have some announcements to do. Can you guys? I have a lot of announcements to do. Everybody say a lot of announcements. All right. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. The first one is our Good Friday service at 6 p.m. next Friday. How good. Now, it's a one-hour service. And after the service, we have food. How good is food? I love food. But I'm going to love the service. The service is going to be amazing, right? The service is that, that spiritual food, amen? And then we get that physical after. And, and the Good Friday service also has a kids program going. So if you're worried about, oh, what am I going to do with my kids? They're going to be running amok or, or you know, in, in the service. It's all right. Just send them up there and they'll be fine. Um, so we have a kids service, kids program running on that service. It's at 6 p.m. Everybody say 6 p.m. Thank you, thank you. Getting it into, I'm used to youth, we we'll really need to like drill it into their heads. Like we have Luna Park, like we had Luna Park. How good was Luna Park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to drill it into them like eight weeks before. We were like, guys, Luna Park, Luna Park, Luna Park. So I'm going to drill it into you guys, all right? 6 p.m. All right. So the Good Friday service, we have food. And, and now with, with eating food, we need people to bring food, right? So I encourage you guys to bring some food with you, right? Um, we have, you can speak to Gina um, at the connection point at the end of the service. Uh, where's Gina? Put your hand up. There she is. Perfect. So you can go, you can speak to her um, about what you can bring and, and things like that. Um, and if you can't cook, it's okay. Bring KFC. It's okay. You know, get, get like a little Subway party platter or something, you know? Um, it's fine. It's fine. There are ways out of cooking, guys. Um, but I encourage you guys, bring it so we can all enjoy a meal together. How good, how good. And we have another service on the Sunday, following the Friday, and that is Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, what an amazing day. What an amazing day of year. Honestly, my favorite day of year. Now, it's at 10 a.m. It's a normal, it's going to be normal time, 10 a.m. to 11.30 in this building here. So I expect you guys all to be there. Bring some friends, you know. Um, there will be coffee and hot cross buns. Um, now, I feel like hot cross buns get some hate, but like I love them, right? I feel like they're very controversial. It's like you either hate them or you love them. People like all these hot cross bun, hot cross bun variants coming out. Like I saw a Vegemite hot cross bun the other day. I was in heaven, not literally, but you know, I was like, this is amazing. This is so good. But people judged me heavily for that. Um, but so there'll be coffee and hot cross buns. How good, how good. Um, and there will be kids program on Sunday as well. And kids, they're up there. Prepare for a Easter egg hunt. Um, there will be a lot of eggs. So parents, sorry if they're on like a sugar high um, or anything like that. Um, but uh, yes, there will be prayer after this service as well. So if you need prayer, come get prayer after the service. Come to the front. We're more than happy to pray for you. A um, few more announcements. Hold on with me, guys. Sorry. There's a lot to go here. Right. We have an Easter celebration. If you guys look at um, the cards that are on your chair, there's this red one. This red one. Oh, flyer. Um, it is our Easter celebration. It is from 11 a.m. 
to 2 p.m. There it is. It's up there too. How good. Um, it's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Rockdale Town Hall. Um, the address is there if you need it as well. Guys, this is such an awesome thing. We have so many different denominations coming in together to praise God with unity. How amazing is that? Do we have so many, so many different dom- denominations that, that can often maybe be arguing with each other, but we're coming together to glorify our God. So how good is that? I encourage you guys all to come 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the 22nd of April. It's on a Saturday, the 22nd of April. Everybody got that? 22nd of April. All right, cool, cool. Um, And on top of that, I expect you guys all to be there because Bay City is leading the corporal worship. Yeah, how good. Let's give a round of applause for our band, for our worship team. How good, how good. And they will be leading that worship. How amazing. Now, I have, well, three more announcements. I'm fly through these ones, but I'm going to drill them in at the same time. You guys ready? We have missions trip coming up. Um, woo, how awesome. Wow. To Cambodia, right? This is just a little, a little sneak peek. Um, it's from the 1st of eighth. First to the 8th of November, 2023. Um, you can see back there, you see Kieran for more information. Um, and he will be more than happy to tell you all that you want to know. All that he knows, you know. Um, all right. We also have, um, where's the other flyer? But God, that is our Easter Sunday service that we're having next Sunday. Be there. Keep this flyer. So you don't put it on the fridge, you know, next to your kids' artwork. Um, put it up there and, and don't forget, don't forget. Um, we have young adults happening today. Shout out young adults. Yeah. Young adults is always a party. It's always good. Anyone from the age of like 17 to 27, 30, 30, 30, 17 to 30. I knew that. I knew that. I was testing you guys. Um, but it's young adults and tonight we are going somewhere amazing. So we're doing dinner at 6 p.m. And then after that, we're going go-karting. Whoa. Actually, hyper-karting, right? At 6. It's like this neon light go-karting. It is awesome. Be there. All my young adults, be there. Don't miss out. It's going to be amazing. If you want more information about that, you can see Jules or myself um, after the service. And we'd be happy to give you some more information. Tonight, 6 p.m., dinner. Last but definitely not least, thank you for putting up with me this long. We have Life Group Week. It is Life Group Week this week. How good. So if you're in a life group, why don't you raise your hand if you're in a life group? If you're in a life group, how amazing, right? We love being in life groups because we get to do life together, right? We get to share together, read the Word together, build up each other, pray for each other. It's such an amazing time. So if you're not in a life group, um. You know, go and, and, and find a life group leader because honestly, you will not regret it. It is something amazing. We have life group leaders up the back there. We have Jerry, big man Jerry over there. He's waving his hand. If you want to go to the connection point after the service, talk to him about some life groups um, and he'll be more than happy to get you in one, maybe even his own. I'm, I, hear, I hear they cook an amazing feast. So Jerry's life group, shout out. Um, but... That is all my announcements. Yes. Thank you. All the announcements. And now, actually, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I have one more announcement. Sorry. But this is a great announcement. This is an amazing announcement that you guys get to witness today. The announcement is a wonderful man of God coming up on the stage to preach to us, to share the Word of God, and to speak into our life. So why don't we welcome our amazing senior pastor, Pastor Andrew, up to the stage. Wow. Why don't we give it Brandon a hand? I think that's the most announcements we've ever had. We, we, we turned up the heat for Brandon. You did well. <laughs> Goodness me. Why don't we stand just for a moment? Do we mind? You good? Who's good? 
Before I start, you praised really well. There was some really good praise in this place, and I just pray we keep continue with that. But I did, we just thank God. God, we just thank you for your word. We pause right now. God, we, we bow our heads and our hearts to the authority of your word. We thank you, God, that it does divide, as your word says. It divides what is truth in you and what isn't. God, we cling to it in this day, in this age. We thank you for its power to speak into every aspect and area of our lives. And we thank you right now that we do not waste our time, but we, we bring ourselves under your word and acknowledge that it never, ever, ever returns void. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, amen. You may be seated. Ah, oh, so good to have you with us this morning. I'm um, jumping into excuse me, part two of, I want to speak on the topic of worship. Everyone say worship. worship. Everyone say worship again. Yeah. Beautiful. I love worship because, I mean, I love worship. I love the music worship. I love cranking the stereo in my car and listening to worship. Anyone else? A friend of mine in the service told me he was driving on the, he was a pillion passenger on a bike, which is hard for any person that owns a bike, <coughs> who was listening to worship purely. Actually, he's listening to Striper, which is worship. I'm sorry. It's worship, 100% worship. And he was listening to it as he was just overcoming the fear of the person who was driving the bike. But I know for me, I, I love worship. I go to a place, I put my headphones on when my son hasn't flogged them. And, um, and I go for a walk and I put my worship on and I just get lost in worship. I have a favorite playlist. Who has a favorite playlist of worship songs? Well... I think we do. But worship obviously in, is a lot bigger than that, and we tapped into that last week. We tapped into the fact that worship is made up of some elements. See, our worship is our response to His love, not the means to gain His love. Amen? You don't have to worship. Amen? Amen? But it's a response. The greatest gift you can give to God is your will. Which means you decide to love Him. You decide to follow Him. You decide to worship Him. You decide to praise Him. That's the greatest gift, isn't it? Right back to the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus is there. And Jesus says to His heavenly Father, Hey, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> he knew he was going to the cross. But what did he say? Not my will, but your will be done. Amen? And for all of us, I think when it comes to worship, it, it, there's a power to it when we open our mouths or we sing and we allow our lives. But worship obviously is more than that. And why is, you know, I, I want to tap into a little bit of why worship is such a big deal to God. Because quite often, you know, I understand when I'm talking about a service here, we're talking about praise and we talk about worship. We had, I think, our team did an, an amazing job, and I think they do every week. And I, I love, I mean, on this Easter 22nd thing, you know, our, our team is going to lead a whole bunch of people in worship. And one of them might be the prime minister, I've been told. But there's something powerful about that. But worship's important to God, and it's, it's something we can't just write off as a part of a service. When you come in here, and I, I know in the past some people skip a little bit of worship and praise. It might not be your thing. But the reality is there's a power behind it. Mercy, uh, uh, worship is something that's powerful. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies... This has been read out as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual 
act of worship. Amen? When we get in, into that term worship, we understand that worship is something powerful. From last week, we learned a few things. We learned we respond internally through humility as our focus towards God. We respond externally through reverence as our focus towards God and all He tells us in His Word. And we respond physically as a lifestyle through our service to Him and His will. That's worship. Worship was made up of both three, the, these three parts. We talked about that last week. But it's very simply put, God is worthy of our worship. Come on. Who, who agrees? Amen. And it's kind of funny because <clears throat> I think when you think about God wanting us to worship Him, I think sometimes when we, <clears throat> excuse me, when we think in the natural in our own heads, trying to figure it out in our own heads and minds, if someone demanded, physically demanded, a human being demanded that you worship them, you kind of look at them and think, what, you got an ego problem or something? Or you, you, are you some sort of, what's going on? Why are you demanding worship? I'm talking just in the natural. If you talk to a, a completely unsaved person and say that, God demands our worship, they go, well, that's a bit e egotistical, isn't it? Doesn't that make, make them in our heads and in our hearts? We go there sometimes. People would think that. But worship is vital to us as believers. That's why God asks us to worship Him. When you understand what worship is, when you get your head around it and the importance of worship, it's actually all about us. Amen. It's almost for our health, for our well-being, for the center of who we are. If we don't worship God, we get things out of whack. God knows what he's talking about. God isn't that person that just needs your worship because he needs a bunch of people. He needs a, a fan club or he, he needs followers that are just going to be really excited. Amen. He created us to worship because worship is a, a core of what we were created to do and who we're created to be. When you mess with the core of your worship, you mess with everything about you as a believer. Amen? Come on. Who's with me? Let me just look at this from a negative point of view for a moment. Let's look at one of the, the, um, the first accounts of false worship and how it came about and what effect it had in Exodus. This Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. The background is here. Um, very quickly, Moses went up to the mountain, called, summoned by God up to the mountain, and he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. He received the Ten Commandments. If, if you know your Bible stories, you know the situation. Moses goes up onto the mountain. God's there. There's a cloud. He receives the, the Ten Commandments that are written by the finger of God. and But meanwhile, down, down on the plains where the Israelites were gathered, they somehow got themselves in a place where uh, even though Moses disappeared, it was a long time. And so they started to lose the picture. Um, they started to lose um, focus on what, who and they were. And so we pick it up in Exodus 24. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you a tablet of stone and the law of the commandments which I have written that you may teach them. So Moses goes up, and then we find out later on that uh, a bit of time has passed by. And let's just see how the Israelites feared. Exodus 32 verse, now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, come, make us gods, little g, that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So straight away, these guys, they, they start to do the first thing that happens when they start to lose their worship of God. The first thing that happens is they lost their reverence and respect for God's ways. 
because they couldn't see God. Moses disappeared. Moses was that conduit between them and God. He had gone for 40 days, 40 nights. Uh, there had been a huge big encounter with God, with everyone there. And then they start to lose it. Then they start to not see him. They start to lose it. And then the second thing is they lost their humility and their reliance on God. Exodus 32, verse 2. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in the ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold um, from their hand, and he fashioned it with an, uh, an engraving tool and made a modeled calf. Then they said, the people of the tribe of Israel said, This is your God, O Israel that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So straight away, God's removed from the picture. These people start to worship. They start to grapple. They start to look at different things to worship. So what they start to worship are things that they've made with their own hands. Come on. They're looking around. Moses is gone. They don't know what's going on. Their worship focus is is moved from God and they start looking and they start looking around, why don't we make something out of what we can make, our own hands, and then they they spring into a lie. This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. They're pointing to a golden calf. And suddenly they start talking about, hey, this look what we've done. Look we made a golden calf and it brought us out of Egypt. Hello, all to do with worship. And they start to focus. And look, honestly, we've got a world that just wants to drag it over here and go, hey, look what we've done. Look what we've achieved. Come on. All those that go to university and go through lectures and things that deny God. Come on. See, worship is a big deal. Number three, the next thing they do is they lost their desire to serve God. Exodus 32 verse 5. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. So Aaron was trying to he wasn't quite where they were at. He was trying to appease the crowd, the mob that had just departed from God. And Aaron was still trying to bring it back to God. And in Exodus 32, verse 6, Then they arose early on the next day, the, the people offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So they kind of lost the worship God on a God part and decided just to give in to what they wanted. Come on. See, when we allow our, ourselves to worship other things, then we just give in to all our desires. Come on. Like, worship is a big deal. <clears throat> it's not a small thing. And I'm not just, obviously, just talking about praise and worship in a church. That's an expression. That's why we have it in our services. Because it's actually important because it reminds us who we worship. Are you with me? It's not just a tag on. It's not just a time filler in between Brandon's announcements. It's not. It's not like we just, it's not like just to warm up the crowd, you know, and, and the comedian gets up or, or we, we come in and, and it's a pre. It, it's actually more than that. It's actually trying to drag you and your heart and your head and your mind and your focus into the fact that God is who we worship. Because you've probably spent a lot of time out there in the world in a secular world trying to drag your mind, your heart, and your spirit away from worshiping God. And that's just for those of us that work in the church, you know. But I mean, it's quite hard. I mean, I, I don't spend all my day and night work, working in a, in, a, in a place, but I've, I've, I've sat in those tea rooms 
I've, I've worked in, in part-time jobs and places where I can tell you there is not a lot of God worship going on. Amen? But the reality is with, with worship, worship is something powerful. It's not something that God just renegades to just a, a part of a service. For the children of Israel, when, when they stopped worshiping the true God, three things, they lost their reverence and respect for God, they lost their humility and reliance on God, and they lost their desire to serve God, simply because they shifted their worship from God to a man-made thing. When we allow something different to take the center of, our, of who we are, <clears throat> and all we're created to be, it, it puts everything out of balance. Verse 32, verse 7, And the Lord said to Moses, Go get down, from your pe- for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it. And then God said, this is, they said, this is what they said. This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Explanation mark. God's saying. They've gone so far that they're now saying that this golden calf made of man delivered them out and not me. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people indeed. It is a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked means unteachable, unable to move with what God wants to do on their lives. Are you still with me? I think it's something that we, we have a will and it's affected every time we worship. Can I, can I say that? Can I say, when you actually jump into worship and praise, your will gets realigned to God because it becomes a focus, because you start lifting Him up, you start talking about Him. His, there's, that, that, sometimes that, those words start to roll over you and you're, you're, you start to praise Him in your lips. And, you know, it's, it's like your body gets into the motion sometimes and your head follows and then your heart follows and you get lost into this place of worship. That is why, why most sin is a worship issue. Come on. I mean, look at the Ten Commandments. The first three Ten Commandments are all about worship. Come on. Exodus 20 verse 1, And God spoke to all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, you shall have no other God before me. Come on. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in that water under the earth. And the next one, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I am the Lord your God and I am a jealous God. Your Christianity is not about fighting sin every day. It's actually probably better that you work out why you haven't got good worship going on in your heart for God. Amen? Asking the question, why am I struggling with worshiping God? What's crept in? Why am I struggling with with God being the center of my life, why, why do I find it hard to, to, to make him number one in my life? If you figure that out, I'll tell you what, you're going to figure out the cause behind some of the sin that we get involved in. Are you still with me? Amen? Romans chapter 1, verse 25, New Covenant. For they exchanged, it talks about in the end day, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Come on. We're in a world now that, that just wants to drag, push, push God out of the picture, trying to put him over in the corner, just get him to disappear. I mean, if we would rather, <clears throat> we've got a secular world, I mean, that wants to put the Easter bunny before Easter <laughs> because Easter focuses on God, amen, or whatever. 
They just want to do what it does to get God out of the picture so that we can focus on. See, even Satan fell from heaven because he sought worship for himself rather than submitting to the Creator. And even Jesus, three big temptations. One of them, Satan took Jesus to a mountain, showed him all the earth, and he says, Matthew 4 verse 9, and he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you would fall down and worship me. Then Satan said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall worship. Serve. So then he goes, hmm. if I somehow changed his worship, I would have changed the core of everything in his life. Satan knew exactly what he was doing. And Satan knows what you're doing in your life. He's trying to change the core of who you are by changing who you worship. And he'll try it. He'll try subtly. He'll try all sorts of things trying to get you away from worshiping so worshiping to God is a big deal. The children of Israel spent all their time trying to deal with this area of worship as we see through the Old Testament. And how does this relate to praise and worship and a service? You know what? Worship is a weapon. Praise and worship, when we come in here and, and we give it our time to praise and worship, it's a weapon. We we need to realize that our ability to praise and worship God is a weapon against the enemy. It says in Psalms chapter 8, verse 3, For the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Praise means to talk about or seeing the goodness and the grace and the greatness of God. When you, when you begin to praise God, you praise yourself out of it. Um, there's a key that it increases our faith. I know this week I've had a lot going on. There seems to be a lot of conflict when you're trying to do a few things I'm doing. At the moment, there seems to be a lot of conflict, especially trying to pull all these <coughs> denominations together. Somehow I found myself in the middle. And I remember I was lying in my bed. Oh, I don't know what night it was, Wednesday or Thursday night. <coughs> and I'm kind of a little bit out of it. And I click through my YouTube and Lauren Dingle. Daigle? Can I go ahead and say Daigle? You Say I Believe comes on. Does anyone know that song? Come on, does anyone know that song? Right now it would be a good opportunity for someone to just click on that song for a little bit. But does anyone know that song? I don't, if you don't know that song, put it in your Google list. It is one of the most faith-building. By the end of that song, I'm lying in my bed watching this YouTube and listening to this, I believe, I believe. Has anyone help me? Can we find the song? Just give me a snippet of the song, someone. Lawrence, Dangle, Dangle. <laughs> you say I believe. I'm telling you, by the end of that song, I was so pumped up, full of faith, absolutely ready to take on the world. Amen? You can't tell me that praise and worship doesn't carry and, and, and build up faith. Can we? Give me time. Well, don't make me sing it. Don't make me sing it. You're going to regret it. Oh, that was a good. Go back to that part. So the first part you just played, Maddie. Okay, fast forward a little bit. More than just the sum of every high and every low. Close your eyes for a second. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. It up. You say I am strong when I think I am weak, and you say I am held when I am falling short, and when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours, and I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me. 
You wanted more, right? Can you feel the faith? That's worship. Because it, it, it got your hearts to focus on God's intent for you. It diminished your circumstances and put God up. It lifted him up. It raised him up. And as soon as that happened, it stirred faith in your life. See, worship's more about us. <laughs> God loves it. It says it's incense. Our worship is incense to God because God is so for us, so for us. He knows if our faith is stirred that we can do anything with him. And that's what worship, it's the center of who we are. I'm going to close, get the band to come up right now. See, praise and worship is being used powerfully, powerfully to break chains. Like I know that song, you might laugh, but I, I was feeling quite overwhelmed. There was just too much going on. And I put that, by the end of that, I felt like I could do another round. I was like, bring it on. It was, it was pretty late. It was past midnight, so I couldn't ring anyone. But, <laughs> but if I had your number, I would have rung you. I was ready to go. I was pumped up, jacked up, good to go. Because God stirred the faith through that. I love this Acts 16 to 22. You know this story, but I'm going to read it. And just to give you, then the multitude rose up against them, and the <coughs> magistrates tore their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, can, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, never say midnight, there's something about midnight, right? They didn't have Laura dangle. <laughs> Black bagel, but bagel. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And everyone says, suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors, not just their door. Come on. Come on. All the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone's, not just theirs. Everyone's. Praise and worship. You've got no idea the spiritual battle that's going on around your lives right now. But when you begin to focus on God and you give Him your worship, why don't we stand? When you give Him your worship, you can see things change. Do you believe it? I'm just trying to challenge you to see. When you come into praise and worship, I honestly would love your heart to be like, this is my opportunity to change the atmosphere around me right now, to change the atmosphere of my own heart, to change the atmosphere of the people around me, to change the atmosphere of negativity that's going, Paul and Silas, I don't know whether they knew that their song and their worship was going to release everyone. i got no idea. But they knew they needed it to release them. And they just sung their hearts out and God turned up. Amen? Come on. We've got a few moments. We'll finish on time. Come on, for a moment now. Come on. Come on. You're worthy of it all. This is worship. For from you for God. all things. And He's worthy of it.
You know, there's anyone in this place that doesn't know Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you have any doubt today whether you have a relationship with Him, the reality is God has always loved you. The Word of God says that He loved us before we loved Him. Salvation is where we just one day turn around, face God, look at Him and acknowledge His love for us and we accept all that He's done for us. But He's poured His love on us. Salvation is when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior and just go, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. You invite Him into our lives, into our hearts. But He's always loved you, friend. And I just want to give people a moment. We do this in our church and maybe you're want to make a rededication this morning or maybe a first time heartfelt decision for Jesus I'm just going to pray a prayer and I'd love everyone in this building to pray this prayer together can we do that come on let's do it together dear Lord Jesus I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior I accept that you died on the cross for me I accept today your forgiveness of my sin and wrongdoing. And today, I accept your gift of your grace and mercy. I accept righteousness that I have right standing before God today. I accept today, my name is written 
in the Lamb's book of life. And eternity is placed in my heart. Come unto my heart, Jesus. Amen. Every eye closed. If you may pray that as a rededication for the first time, come and talk to us afterwards. Come and come and talk to myself or one of our team. We'd love to pray with you and take you through that decision. Amen. But God, I just pray for everyone here. God, we have an opportunity to worship you. You don't force us. Our worship is like an incense, a sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. God, I pray that hearts, minds would be stirred today. Whenever we have the opportunity to worship you, which is just more than praise and worship, we would do it. We'd take the moment, we'd pause our minds from other things and give you the focus. Lift up your name. God, I pray for a stirring as your word says in the last days that you are looking for true worshipers, people that worship with spirit and in truth. God, make us those people. Make us living sacrifices, which is our reasonable worship, your word says. But God, we thank you for the ability and opportunity to worship. You are worthy of our worship. Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Beautiful. There it is. God bless you. Don't forget, if you could help us with some food for Good Friday, next Friday, Gina's going to be there underneath the connection point. Put your name down, bring a dish or something. But thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Don't forget, young adults, if you head out that way, you've got your own hangout area there. You blessed people. And you're going to have some great time this afternoon. But God bless your church. Have a great, great rest of your Sunday. Hi, church. Thanks for joining with us to Church Online today. It was great fellowshipping with you. For all details, go to www.baycitychurch.com. We love you, church.